Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to AV Astronomy. Aaron here. In today's episode, I wanted to talk about something that I don't think really uh, gets a lot of discussion in the world of astrophotography and really just in uh, photography, I think, in general, is the issue of ISO variance. Some of you may know what I'm talking about. And some of you may be like, what? what is this ISO variance? So, simply put, all digital SLRs are not created equally. You have some that are more ISO variant, and you have some that are more ISO invariant or ISO less. And then you have some that are kind of a, you know, a, a mixed bag of nuts when it comes to that. But what does that mean to you as an astrophotographer? And why does that even matter, right? Well, the reason why that's important is because depending on which way your camera leans, being ISO invariant or ISO variant, will really have an impact on what the best ISO is for you when you're doing your imaging. So, you know, for me, for instance, I've always just kind of gone with either ISO 800 or 1600 when I was imaging because it just seemed like a good middle ground. But after doing further research and doing a test, a real simple test that we're going to conduct here uh, later this evening, and I'm going to show you guys just how to do that, you can check and see and find out where your camera stands. What's the best ISO to be using for landscape astrophotography? to get a proper result on this all other things have to be equal right so your shutter speed will remain the same and the aperture you use will remain the same but what we'll do is run through a gamut of different ISO starting at the lowest for most people that'd be a hundred and all the way up to you know for some feasibly let's just say 12,800 so one full stop increments and we'll go through that step by step here but what that's gonna do is it's gonna paint a picture a palette of each image okay and what you're gonna do in post-processing make all the images exposures the same so you're gonna change that in post-processing and what that does is it keeps the other variables the same the shutter speed and the aperture but you're getting a nice side-by-side -side comparison of each ISO and you'll be able to determine okay you can you see for yourself you can look at these pictures and see okay at ISO 200 it, there's this much grain or color noise and at ISO 8 and so forth. By looking over your results, you can determine what the best ISO is for you. So with that, let's get things set up and let's go ahead and start doing some testing. Okay guys, so what I did was I did a series of exposures at ISO 200, 400, 800, 1600, 32, and 6400. Now like I mentioned before, all, the, all other uh, variables have to be the same. So this was all shot at f8 with my 8 inch RC optical uh, telescope and at 60 second uh, exposure times. Each of these subframes have been adjusted in camera raw to match the exposure. So to just to give you an example, I'll go ahead and bring that up. When you first open up these raw images, they'll appear here on the left and you will notice that uh, the, you will notice the exposure slider here you adjust that by a stop for each ISO increment for instance ISO 6400 was the standard so when I went to the ISO 3200 picture I increased the exposure of that one by a stop one full stop right here boom and it made it the same exposure as the 64 and so on you'll do two stops then three then four and so on it's one stop increment each time that should get you pretty close on having an equal exposure as far as the lightness of the images is concerned and then you can compare the noise level of each so let's take a look here this let's start with 6400 let me zoom out a bit you'll notice here I mean there is some grain but there's grain in all of them uh, which isn't bad luminance noise 
but the the color noise is is very well controlled here and this is at ISO 6400 okay if we go to the next one 3200 you got a little bit more dynamic range you notice here a little bit more color and I think for me in this camera the Canon 77D this is gonna be more or less the sweet spot ISO I'll be using going forward when I'm imaging with the RC um, otherwise I'll probably go at ISO 1600 but really anything lower while I would make some gains in dynamic range as you go lower you'll notice look at these look at these images around here around the comet you can see the color model the color blotch starting to appear stronger and stronger with each ISO drop look how much stronger it is there in 200 I didn't do 100 to 100 would have been horrendous but look how bad it is on 200 it's really bad so something to keep in mind if, if you're I think where you see the biggest benefits with this is with you know longer focal length systems like the RC that I'm using you know this kind of camera is it's more advantageous to have uh, this kind of camera as opposed to one that may be ISO invariant where pretty much the noise level looks the same across all ISOs now there's two ways to look at that if it's a camera that handles the noise very well then kudos to you that's a great camera that means 200 800 1600 your noise levels are gonna be about the same but in this case with the Canon camera and I think this is common with a lot of Cameron Canon cameras is there they're highly ISO variant and this one certainly lives up to that it's definitely if you let's do a comparison here's 200 and now look at 6400 there's almost no color blotch in the in the higher ISO 6400 now and you still have some decent dynamic range um, I'll show you a chart here next uh, that shows the dynamic range as it as you increase the ISO it lowers the uh, dynamic range of the image but I'll show you that here shortly but guys this I think is is really useful if you you want to know how to get the best out of your camera with regard to ISO when you're imaging and doing when you're doing astrophotography with a digital SLR I think it's really important to know this because you know some people will argue you should shoot lowest ISO possible for that dynamic range and in, in cases where you have you know a fast enough focal ratio and you can do that um, more power to you but in instances where light is an issue light gathering power is an issue focal ratio is longer focal length is longer uh, having the benefit of being able to use a higher ISO without increasing the noise and in this case you actually decrease in the noise is a huge benefit so let's take a look at some of those charts that show how ISO correlates to dynamic range okay so the website that I one of the websites I use uh, to look at camera specs is DxO Mark, and in this case we've got of course the Canon 77D which is the DSLR I use and if you scroll down the page to dynamic range there's a nice little chart down here and it compares three different camera models 760D, D5600, 77D and how dynamic range drops as you increase ISO I think considered you know your threshold of a usable good dynamic range is going to be somewhere as you know as close to 10 as possible but you know within a certain I believe a decent dynamic range that can give you respectable result can still be had right around the 8 to 10 mark okay and for most of these cameras they're on par for that you'll notice here with the 77D the ISO as you drop down to ISO 1600 your, your dynamic range is still pretty good at this point and even at 32 and 64 that's still respectable this is a great website to use to compare these types of information uh, so you can kinda get a gauge of where your camera stands with regard to dynamic range and other things color sensitivity there's all kinds of things you can look at signal to noise but for the sake of the video here we really want to just look at dynamic range so there you have it well guys that concludes the video for today. If you enjoyed the video, you felt like you got something out of it, please leave a thumbs up, like, subscribe, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future videos that will be covering gear, tutorials, and imaging sessions. Also, I've put some helpful links in the description to some common astrophotography gear that can help get you started in astrophotography. 
Until next time, clear skies.